is one of our engineers in SurveyMonkey. He's in the Analyze Backend team. He's been with us for a few years now. And uh, let's hear what he has to say. All right, good evening, everyone. Hopefully presentation is visible and everything. Um, I'm gonna be talking to you about uh, what we're calling an unusual stack, uh, Python 3, MS SQL, and what I'll call small data analysis at SurveyMonkey. Um, why did it do that? Um, so SurveyMonkey is now a Python shop. This wasn't always true. We used to be a .NET shop, which explains how we got into this situation. I won't bore you with the historical detail, but we retained the MS SQL database from those times. Um, when we started redesigning the way we do analysis, we built a new backend because survey data is relatively small. We decided to go through a system that would load all the data into memory and would give us the ability to do our analysis code in Python, which is just a lot easier than doing it in SQL. And I'm sure most of you understand that all too well. Um, originally, this system was designed for Cassandra, but we moved it to MS SQL for operational reasons. Um, and we adopted the standard way that at SurveyMonkey we use MS SQL which is we use the PyMS SQL client on top of the free TDS driver. And this gave us an opportunity to assess our performance and how things work. Um, it didn't work super well because for large queries, it turns out that the, the driver client combination we picked was inferior to the system that we had replaced. Also this thing, um, this hadn't happened when we did the decisions around this, but at the time, PyMS SQL was clearly not actively supported. It didn't have a big community. Since then, it has been completely deprecated, so we had to think fast. So one of my compatriots, Robert, did a whole bunch of analyses. So this is a table which might be useful to some of you, showing the performance for different clients, including the Pandas SQL direct connection, um, and different drivers, uh, and the Cassandra ones in there for, for show. Um, we're using fetch alls here because it turns out that PyMS SQL doesn't honor server-side cursors, so we were trying to compare apples to apples. The big lesson here is that we can save a lot of time leaving PyMS SQL by going to the MSODBC driver, which is Microsoft's um, preferred driver, and especially since we're doing data analysis in Python, we can take advantage of a new driver, or sorry, a new client, TurboDBC, which has native NumPy serialization. So we can put the data right out of the database into NumPy format, and that makes it super easy to do the data analysis in Python. Um, this sounds easy because it's a lot of very simple changes um, to change how you process data from the old model into this, into working well with TurboDBC. As usual, no small change goes unrewarded by thousand line commit things. So like be prepared for that. Sometimes weird things happen. Um, I'm gonna show you a bunch of results. Mostly they'll make sense to our team, but uh, hopefully the meaning comes across. We went to our web, layer which sits in front of our back end and we compared the performance. Um, we're comparing one week apart because our traffic is highly based on days of the week. So these I believe are two consecutive Wednesdays. Um, 6 to 10 a.m. is our busy time. So this is our peak traffic. So you'll notice two things. One is that in the new system the median is higher which sounds bad and I can explain that one, but the 99.95 percentile is significantly lower. I know it still looks abysmal. Um, there's only so much magic you can do for some other mistakes we did, which I won't bore you with. Um, the median actually gets higher because TurboDBC, in order to speed large queries, has the ability to set up a buffer at initialization time. And that of course takes a significant number of milliseconds if you're initializing a large 100, 500 megabyte buffer. So we eat it a bit on the median time, but we get back a lot on the longer times. 
And this is important because the timeouts during the same window, the customers who went away unhappy because nothing loaded, dropped from 59 to seven, which we're calling statistically significant. And in another endpoint that uses the same code, this is a chart, um, the bins are days of the week. And this is sort of a chart of the number of timeouts that they had, which translate as failures. That red line is when we turned on the new system. Uh, we're also calling that statistically significant. So we had a lot of improvement by switching to TurboDBC. Um, so what should you expect? If you use TurboDBC, um, you should expect to be defenestrated. Your tech lead will find you and bad things will happen to you. So I'm putting this up there as a cautionary warning. Um, here's some very basic code that we wrote and tested in TurboDBC. You open a cursor, you execute some SQL, you load out the data. Um, we're all familiar with this sort of pattern. Let's run some unit tests on it. You don't want to see that. This is Python. You should never see that last phrase. And if you do, you should immediately get out. Um, the short version is, is that TurboDBC, which is very fast, also is very new and so it has some teething issues. At the time, this was an issue related to it carries around a string of pointers and sometimes it tries to asynchronously clear them with all the fun that that involves. There are some other things that we found, assuredly they'll be fixed as time goes forward, but be very careful if you're going to switch to this sort of environment that you test all the paths through that you're going to use. We thought we did it. We still found another issue in production that uh, that's on us, but be careful testing this. It's very fast, and we, we, but we only recommend it if you need speed for large loads. And I guess the message I'm trying to put across in this presentation is Python and MS SQL are not often seen together, uh, probably outside of Microsoft, but there's still ways to get high performance out of it, certainly for small and medium sized data analysis and large data analysis, you should be using specialized tools anyway. Um, there are a bunch of options to replace it in that earlier chart. If you go, if you go back to it or if I went back to it, you'd see that PyODBC and MSODBC as the driver perform relatively well. They certainly perform better than our original stack. Um, Microsoft has a few suggestions on how to do this. And you don't need to use what we did, but there are faster ways than were apparent in like 2014 or 2015 when last our company evaluated it seriously. And you can definitely do data analysis, even if your data is in MS SQL, even if no one you know is doing it, because there are tools for it. But some of the tools on the other side, some of the tools are new and unstable with all the fun that that entails. Um, as usual, doing things like this leads to things that aren't on Stack Overflow because it's new. And I can't provide a strong reason to say if you're already on MySQL or a similar relational database, I can't say a, there's a strong reason to move to MS SQL for the purpose of doing data analysis on Python. Just know that it's possible and it's an option and it can still be performant. And that's actually all my talk. Um, I will stop sharing. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Matt. Uh, like